Hi, it's Trisha here at Club Scrap, and I've got a great project to show you from the National Parks Kit called the Explorer's Journal. Let's get started. Here is our journal, and what I love about this is the peekaboo binding here. Um, it's a standard type kettle stitch that we'll be doing, and just running stitch uh, back and forth, and I'll show you how to do that. In addition, this unique um, structure here has these tabs going back and forth, um, and it's a double thickness of paper, so it's a nice strong binding, but I think it's beautiful with the stitching exposed on the outside. And the tabs have these little buttons just as a decorative element. We've included some printed cut-aparts. And then when you open it, um, the structure of the book is actually made up of super heavy-duty brown bags. Um, and then also a, a white, speckled white paper for the inside pages. Now with these brown bags, you can insert memorabilia, tickets, pictures, additional pages inside the pockets. And you can even make a little slot in the edge of these um, bags if you want to create additional pockets for your book. So let's get started and show you how to construct the book. We'll begin with our white inside pages. So first we'll just take our page and carefully fold this in half. Now remember, you're building the foundation of your book when you make these folds. So you want to make sure your corners are neatly lined up before you take a bone folder and make a nice, clean, crisp fold with the bone folder. So we do that with all seven of your pages and I've gone ahead and done that already. Then you'll take the brown paper bags and you'll fold these in half with the base of the bag on the inside of the fold. One of the things I learned in doing this is sometimes the paper can buckle and like make an extra crease if you're not careful. So as you bring that bag forward, you know, just kind of make sure you don't have any paper bunching up at the fold. And then you'll do the same thing. Just make a nice crease with your bone folder. And you repeat that for all seven of the paper bags we've included in the kit. Now let's prepare these inside folded inside pages for stitching by adding some, some pierced holes. I've unfolded the page so that I can feel this little bumpy ridge here. And when I place my ruler, I can rest it on that ridge and then I know it's nice and straight and directly on the fold line. We'll make our uh, pierces at the following measurements, a half an inch and then one and three quarters, two and a half, then down to three and a half, four and a quarter, and five and a half. And those measurements will be in your printed instructions as well. Now that I have my first page pierced, I can use this as a template for my next couple of pages. When it comes to the white papers, um, it's fine to just maybe do three, three-ish at a time. Just make sure those pages are very, very accurately lined up. If your piercing holes are not directly in the fold of the inside page, it will affect the outcome of your book in a negative way. So you just really want to make sure that you're getting right through that fold line. So I just did three white pages and then I'll do another set here. Once you have all seven of your inside white pages pierced, we need to transfer these same stitching holes to the brown bags. So you, I recommend working with the bags one at a time. I, I made a sample of this book where I stitched through several bags at a time and it just was not as accurate. And as I mentioned, it's important that these holes are right in that fold. So I ran into some problems as a result of a poor foundation. Um, so uh, learn from my mistake and just pierce one, maybe two bags at a time, but I just, you know, for the most accurate uh, stitching holes, one at a time. All right, I've gone ahead and done all the piercing for these other bags. Um, as far as the positioning of the, the bags themselves, they can go either way into the signatures. You can alternate them or do them all the same. But each signature will have one white page nested inside one folded bag. Now it's time to prepare the outside covers for stitching holes as well. The first thing we need to do is add a few score lines so we can create a spine. We'll be scoring this uh, cover horizontally at five and a half and six and three quarters. I'll take the other cover, which is brown. This paper has a texture on one side and it's smooth on the other. When I score it, I want the texture side facing up. And again, at the same measurements, five and a half and six and three quarters. This is the right side of the paper and I want the indentation of the score to be on this side. This is the wrong side of the paper and the bump of the score is here and that's where we want it. Next, we're gonna use our ruler and a pencil to add some vertical lines 
to our spine pieces. And I'll do this on the wine colored paper. It's a little easier to see. So this is one of the score lines. It doesn't matter which one. You just need one of them. And I'm going to rest the ruler, the quarter inch measurement of the ruler, on that score. Once I have that lined up vertically, I'll take my pencil and draw directly onto the paper a vertical line. Then I need to draw six more vertical lines one eighth of an inch apart. So I'll just scoot the ruler, ruler down an eighth of an inch and draw another vertical line and just keep drawing. Like I said, we need a total of seven. And that rule, grid ruler helps me keep everything nice and straight and equal, in equal distance apart as we go. Okay, now that we have our vertical lines here, I need to draw some horizontal lines intersecting these vertical lines. The first line I draw is going to be half of an inch from the edge of my paper. Then I'll scoot the ruler up to one, one and a quarter, one and a half, one and three quarters. Let's see, one and three quarters. I want to get this right. And then the next one is two and a half inches. Okay, two and a half inches. Now I'm just going to go from the other edge, the same three measurements. So the first one was one half of an inch. Now I also have it in the instructions that lists all the the measurements from one edge, but if you just repeat it from the other end, you'll be fine. So that's a half. And the next one was one and three quarters. It's going to be all the way over here. And then the last one was at two and a half. Two and a half. I absolutely love my grid ruler. Now, what should be the case is, and I'm going to confirm this. I've learned, I've learned my lesson the hard way. <laughs> Uh, these uh, stitching holes in the in the signatures here should match these horizontal lines and look at that they do that means we're good to go for the next step and you know it wouldn't hurt for you to check that as well if I just make a slight crease on the spine on those score lines on this piece and then also on the brown the spine will actually end up nesting together like this so I've got one long side here and one long side here nest those spines together. Make sure everything's lined up well. And I'm gonna take my cork board and a paper piercing tool and literally pierce through every single intersecting pencil line. Not the score lines or anything, just those. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six rows and seven columns. Lots of piercing to do. It doesn't take long at all though. Okay, so now all of my stitching rows are ready to go on my covers. Now, you could literally stitch the book together at this point, but I'm going to add another step that makes it even a little more fancy. And for that, we need a craft knife and a cutting mat. So I have my cutting mat, and I have one of my covers placed. This is the three-inch, I think it's three inches, let's just confirm. Yeah, the three-inch area of the cover. There's another five-and-a-half-inch area over here. We're not going to be cutting through that at all, just through the three-inch area and the one-and-a-quarter-inch one spine. So I'm taking my ruler, and from, it's basically the bottom edge, I'm measuring up, and this is in step seven of your instructions, measuring up at one-and-a-quarter inches with my grid ruler. So make sure I'm nice and vertically aligned. Nice firm pressure. I'm going to use my craft knife to cut from here all the way to this spine piece, uh, this back score line. Stop right there. Okay, so now I have one cut that was at one and a quarter inches. So I'm going to scoot this over to one and a half inches. And check my vertical alignment. You could draw these lines with a pencil first. And I did that uh, the first couple times, but I, I think this is that's like an unnecessary step. Um, the next measurement, two and three quarters. So here's two inches, there's a quarter, there's two and a half, there's two and three quarters. And stopping again at the same area. Now, what I'm going to do is just rotate this and do the exact same thing I just did from the edge, one and a quarter inches. Check my vertical alignment firm, even pressure, and I'm now, I'm trimming, I'm cutting from the spine to the edge this way. Scoot it down to one and a half, and basically now I'm preparing these tabs 
that create that peekaboo binding, which I think is so, so cool. But it's not necessary. So if this freaks you out, just skip it. All right, now I have all these little fingers. <laughs> Each one created this narrow strip. See them? Two are the same size. These are more narrow, and then this one's a little larger. We need to remove these. To remove them, I'm going to take the grid ruler, place it along the score line there. Check my vertical alignment. And with my craft knife, I'm just going to make it the little cut where those three tabs are situated and remove them. Now, my spine has like four fingers. <laughs> what you'll do then is take the other spine and follow the same exact procedures. We want these spines to look exactly the same. So you go ahead and do that, add those little uh, cuts, and then remove the tabs. Now I have my two covers with my four fingers each, and we need to interlock them together in the way that we want them to live. Okay, so this is kind of weird. Um, we want two red ones, two wine colored papers to go under. <laughs> This is wrong side up, okay? This is the inside of our cover. So two red will be here and two brown will be here, okay? And in order to work with this more easily, I just thought it would be better to just temporarily tape things in place so that when we're trying to stitch things together, these little tabs aren't flopping all over the place. So just some little pieces of tape to hold, hold things down. Okay, and if you want, you can do that on the front side as well. I didn't. Um, I, did, I did all right with it, but if, if, you know, let's just tack these down with a tiny little piece. We want to be able to remove it, but that way it won't be flopping all over the place when we're trying to see what we're doing, because that's not very fun. All right, now it's time to uh, add your needle to the wax linen thread. So you have to supply your needle um, it's any kind of a, oh, there goes my buttons. <laughs> That's all right. Any kind of a needle will do that, uh, preferably like a blunt tip. It might be known as a tapestry needle, just so you don't, uh, you know, we want sweat and tears, but no blood when we make the project. <laughs> and we will begin with one of our signatures and we will enter our first stitching hole from the outside to the inside. So you just kind of have to pick a spot to call it the bottom of the book. Say this is the base of the book and here's our... Here's our signature. We'll enter our stitching hole like so. And we want to go through one set of these pages or one signature of pages through that corresponding hole at the bottom. So just enter the bag. Make sure you go through the page. And sometimes it can just be a little awkward to show. <laughs> and then just pull it through until you have a tail. In the instructions, I think I said three inch tail, but you know, be generous because we're gonna have to re-thread our needle onto this tail. So just gotta make sure you have enough thread to work with. And I did give you enough thread to sew on all the buttons and to sew through all the signatures with more than enough to spare. Then you'll just simply go in and out all the way to the top of the signature. Once we're on the inside of our signature, we gotta stitch back out. So just enter your pages, the bag, and going out through the spine through both layers back to the outside and you'll proceed by stitching just in and out in the same fashion all the way. Now it might take a little while for you to sort of get the hang of this whole thing and it seems like the first signature is the most awkward when you're trying to get everything lined up going through both layers of tabs. My initial um, prototype of this project when I was kind of experimenting with the format, I did not overlap the tabs because, I don't know why, I just didn't. But I thought if, if I have two layers of paper here, it's going to make a stronger book and, and that totally worked out that way. So that's why I did it. Going right back through. You'll notice I have quite a bit of slack going on here. We want that completely gone before we close out the signature and call it done. You just never want to be a slacker when you're stitching your book together. <laughs> Pull, and then double check. I mean, I did. I did it. I had definitely a good, you know, inch of slack in one of my signatures. I'm so disappointed on a prototype. But now you can see, inside and outside, everything's pulled nice and tight. 
And then I'm ready to add my second signature. So now my first signature is closed. And then I'll grab another one. And it's up to you, like if you want the bottom of the bags always facing the same direction or facing reverse direction, it's up to you. So now I'm on the outside. To start the next signature, I go into the nearest hole right to, at the top of the book, or at the head of the book, they call this. Through that hole and then through my new signature. And then you just stitch in and out in the same fashion until you get to the bottom of the spine. Here I've reached the bottom of the signature now and my pretty little stitches out here. Now I need to deal with this. I've got one tail and I've got one thread. So I'm going to just tie this so that they're tied together. <laughs> that's really all there is to it, right? Okay, so that gets things started. And this is no different than what we would do if we were making what I would call a kettle stitch book with a ba real basic running stitch like this. Now, I bet you can guess, the next step is going to be to, in to enter the nearest stitching hole through the covers and then through our next signature of pages. You always just want to make sure that you're always adding your signatures in the right spot. Again, if you, if you care about where the bottom of the bag is, you might want to check the orientation. I made the stitching holes so that they're same from top to bottom as they are from bottom to top, so you don't have to worry about flipping things around. Um, it doesn't really matter it, what shouldn't, provided your measurements are correct, because, you know, if they're not, then you are going to have some problems. Um, just make sure you double and triple check those measurements. Why do I know this? Well, we'll save that for another day. Now that I've reached, uh, I'm back at the top. I should probably re readjust my orientation here. Here's the base, here's the top. And I have this stitch that connects signatures one and two and I'm exiting the hole after attaching signature three. So what I want to do here is take this needle and bring it underneath this, this stitch here. And I'm, the, the direction of my needle is pointing from to the outside of the book, okay? So past the top edge of the book. And you want to remember that direction each time and, do, and repeat it so that all your stitches look the same. So all I did was bring that underneath and now all I have to do is go all the way up then into hole number four so I can add my fourth signature. Now I've successfully returned, I think I'm at the top of the book here, and I've connect, made all those connecting stitches like I showed you. So here's my last one. And if I'm following suit with my pattern, I keep flipping directions on you, I'm going underneath the previous stitch from the inside to the outside. I do that on both ends. Now all I have to do is just re-enter the nearest stitching hole again, the, the one I just came out of. Go back inside the book and find where my needle went. Sorry, I know it's kind of hard to follow all this tipping and turning, but that's kind of what you have to do is just, you know, find your way back where you came. Oh, there it is. Okay, so now I have my needle going back into the inside of the last signature. Now to tie this off, just bring the needle underneath and then it'll form a loop like this and just bring that needle through the loop and then when you pull it it will make a knot with a really silly little loop in there <laughs> there we go I love wax wood and thread it's so forgiving go back underneath I got a little slack in there I shouldn't have there now I take my scissors and just trim the tail that's very pretty except I have I have this tail sitting here. So what I'm going to do is take my thread off the needle and I have to re-thread the needle with this tail, which may take me a second or two. If you have trouble with this, you can really like flatten out the thread so it's an, an, like a pancake and then uh, bring, it, bring it onto the needle. I have some wax, linen, wax caught in there, so sometimes... Oh, there we go. So now I'm in. And then I'll just re-enter this stitching hole going right back through the signature to the inside with the tail. And then go underneath this stitch and through the loop to make a knot and repeat that. And then tie that or trim that tail. Alright, now for finishing touches. 
Let's just quickly go over this. It's purely a design preference here, but I thought it would be really sharp if we took the quarter inch edge of a corner chopper or corner rounder, if you happen to have one, and if you take these tabs and round them off. It's a very subtle little thing, but I just think it adds a nice touch to that outside cover. Then on the back, I'll just take off these little tape, tape tacks and round those corners on those red tabs, or wine color tabs, rather. All that's left to do are for finish, finishing touches. Well, I have to clearly have to clean up my <laughs> my corner chopper. Woo! Lots of little corners flying around here. Um, the only thing left is the kit comes with these buttons, and this is purely a de decorative um, thing. So to attach the buttons, I will show you how easy that can be. We'll take our tabs, isolate them and the cover on the cork board. The buttons have a rounded edge and a flat edge. Make sure the flat edge is facing down. And then take your paper piercing tool and just pierce through both the cover and the tab so that you have some stitching holes. And you repeat that for the back cover and you can just simply take your needle and sew them on with the generous length of wax linen thread that remains. Okay, so here are my buttons all installed. Now on the inside, we still have these tabs that were taped down. If you want, you can come through with your favorite adhesive or some book binding glue. You know I love my ATG and like tack those tabs in place. Now we have our stitching showing right here, so we have a solution for that with these inside covers. Be mindful that um, the covers have an orientation. So just take it for a test drive and then you can add your adhesive or your book binding glue and just make sure they rest into the book. You should have about an eighth inch margin on these sides here for a nice placement. Notice I contrasted the, the inside cover. So on the wine outside cover I'm placing a brown inside cover. Double check my orientation. It fits on there perfectly. Okay, now your kit came with a sheet of cut aparts. And I, I've gone ahead and trimmed them. So they start out as a full size sheet. And these uh, sizes of art are strategically made um, to fit into some very specific areas of the book. At this point, it doesn't really have a front or a back. You can choose. I chose this as my front. And this one cut apart is sized to perfectly fit within the open area of the front cover. So can you just imagine all the fun embellishing you can do uh, with this, this book? It's going to be so much fun. Then on the inside, each of the bags has this base with the logo on it, and you can then attach a cut apart within that opening on the bag to cover that on each one. So there are seven of these panels that will fit. Now if you've alternated your bag panel so that sometimes you might have the base of a bag on the right, and if you know that you're right-handed and you need to do some journaling, put the journaling pieces of art on the right side so that it's comfortable for you to add your journaling here. That makes sense? Okay, so here again we have our Explorer's Journal. I'm looking forward to uh, guiding you through making this project for yourself and being successful. If you just have a little patience and you take it one step at a time, I'm sure you'll make a beautiful handmade book. Good luck!